I like this engineering one. Engineer, ng far, he's far away. <laughs> That's so stupid. Okay, so rotational kinetic energy. Let's discuss that. Remember from linear motion, though, we have equations for your kinetic energy in a linear sense. This is from your data booklet. So do you remember uh, kinetic energy is just half mv squared? Remember there's another version as well from your data booklet, which goes p squared over 2m. In other words, the momentum squared divided by 2 times the mass. Well, there's a rotational version as well. So that's how we're just going to do this mapping directly. So ek will be the rotational kinetic energy. All right. And remember, that's going to be measured in joules. Um, that's going to equal, let's see, we've got one half, that's the same. And remember the rotational equivalent of mass? It's moment of inertia, that's I. All right, so I'll put in that one, so that's I. And remember the units for that one? It's measured in, let's see, I is uh, mR squared, so that must be kilogram meters squared. Okay, uh, oh, I can't forget there's V squared here. So what's the rotational version of V? It's called omega. So it's omega squared. And omega, remember, is the angular velocity. And that's measured in radians per second. Okay, and finally, that equals, let's see now, what's the rotational version of momentum? It's called angular momentum, L. And so this one here then is going to be L squared, all that over 2 times and m is the mass, ooh, that becomes an i again like this right here. So this right here is your equation for the uh, rotational kinetic energy. And luckily this is in your data booklet. Well, let's not forget for the units for angular momentum. Remember that L equals i omega. So that means then that the units must be, well, what are the units for i? It's kilogram meters squared. And um, omega, it's in radians per second, so we'll just ignore the radians, so it's going to be per second. Okay, let's do an example. So we have a situation where we have a solid sphere and has a mass m, radius r, and it rotates about its center with a constant angular velocity. All right, so that's nice. It's called omega. So far, nothing crazy. The rotational kinetic energy of this thing is called E. Okay, now what's the moment, uh, the moment of inertia of a solid sphere? We're told that it's two-fifths mr squared. Okay, so far nothing crazy. But now we have another solid sphere and it's rotating, but it's got some different situations. It's got a mass m, same as before, but its radius is twice what the other one was, and its angular velocity is three times what the other one was. So think about this, it's twice, uh, twice the radius and it's spinning faster. So the question is, find an expression for the second sphere's rotational kinetic energy in terms of E. So this is what I like to call a ratio question. Ratio because we're doing like you know, some set of data over another set of data, because that's how it's going to be a good way to solve it. So I solve all ratio questions in the same way. I solve them all by just writing an equation for what I consider sort of new. And I do new over old. And I'll show you what I mean here. Now I'm going to do it in sort of the brute force way just to show you every step. Those who are used to doing this kind of stuff, you'll probably skip some steps. But let's just figure this out. So first let's figure out what I would call, you know, old. So the equation for the rotational kinetic energy then, Ek, is going to be, it's just like half mv squared except it's half i omega squared. Um, now i got to consider though what's i? because i got to sort of break this open and figure this out. So that means I've got Ek equals, well, one-half, and then I've got my i, which is two-fifths mr squared, and all that times omega squared. Um, okay, and by the way, remember it's not called Ek, they just called it E, so I'll just change it and call it just E. All right, and let's just try to uh, simplify this. Hey, look, the twos cancel out, so then I end up with an equation that goes mr squared omega squared over 5. So I'll write that down. So mr squared omega squared all that over 5. And that's what I'm going to consider old. Okay, well then I need an equation for new. Let's do that one. 
So for new, I just do the new situation here. So E2, maybe I'll call it that. It's still going to be 1 half i omega squared. And that means then E2 is going to be, let's see, 1 half. And here's where it changes. I mean, I've still got the two fifths going on, but uh, let's see. I've got m. Ooh, that's the same. That's fine. But I've got a radius, which is 2r, and all that is squared. Don't forget, the brackets have to be around the 2r here, 2r squared. All that times um, 3 omega squared. So what's going to happen here then? Uh, well, I can just start simplifying. So I've got e2, let's see, equals... Um, well, my twos can cancel out, so that was nice. But I gotta open this up. So I've got m, let's see, on the top. I've got two squared, so that gives me a four and an r squared. And here I got three squared, which is nine times omega squared. And all that is over five. All right, if I keep going then, I've got e2 then equals, let's see, what's 4 times 9? That's 36. So I'll say, okay, that equals 36 uh, m r squared omega squared, all that over 5. Now, those who are used to doing this, you'll recognize that, hey, this one looks just like this one except it's just 36 times. So you could stop right there and say, ah, e2 equals 36e. And in case you weren't sure though, let me just show you all the steps. So let me do new over old now. New over old. So that means I'm gonna do, now let's just do this whole fraction right here. So e2 equals, let's see, 36 m r squared omega squared over five. And that whole equation divided by the original one, which was just E equals M R squared omega squared over five. And remember what happens when you multiply, uh, sorry, divide by, uh, divide a fraction by a fraction, you end up multiplying by the reciprocal. So we could say that, um, again, I'm writing a lot of steps here. If you get tired of it, don't worry. We're almost there. Then I can multiply by this one here flip. So that means I can say 5 over m r squared omega squared. Here's where all the magic will happen. The 5s will cancel out. The m r squared omega squareds cancel out. And what am I left with? I'm just left with that e2 over e equals 36. Therefore, if I want to get e2 by itself, what do I say? I just say, hey, that equals 36 times e. And that's my final answer. So like I said, those who are fast with this right here or have done this before, you'll, you'll skip this last step right here, which is fine, because you basically just want to get your second one in terms of your first one. If you notice mr squared omega squared over 5, this one also had an mr squared omega squared over 5. Therefore, and if you divided this by this, you'd know, that, oh, it's just going to be 36. So that's how you could have known as well. This is a very typical kind of setup question for uh, something on paper 1A where it's multiple choice. So you're supposed to do this kind of stuff fairly fast.